Gee, if I had one criticism, I would say the government needs to sell itself more to the rest of the world. You have great opportunity here, but not many people know about them. And I think we you know a bit more of a marketing push to let people know about the joys and opportunities that exist here in Cambodia. Thank you so much for uh, spending your time here with us. Uh, Chris is the executive uh, uh, director of EU as a British Council. So my first question to you, what exactly is EU AEC and why is it important for ASEAN, especially for Cambodia? Okay, so the EU ASEAN Business Council was established about 10 years ago. And we were set up with a very simple mission, which is to improve the trade and investment uh, climate between Europe and Southeast Asia for the benefit of European industry. So our mission really is to work with the governments of Southeast Asia, including the Royal Cambodian Government, and try and work for improvements in policies, in investment regimes, to enable more European businesses to come to Southeast Asia, invest in Southeast Asia, employ Southeast Asians, and boost the trade relationship between the two blocs. As an organization, we are officially recognized by the ASEAN Secretariat and by the European Commission, but we are completely independent of both. So we, we work to serve the interests of our members, and our members are very large-scale European multinational corporates, some big household names, people like you might know like Bosch or BMW, and others you may not know as well, but they do operate a lot, particularly in the healthcare sector as well, a lot of members in the healthcare sector. So this time, uh, you pay a visit to Cambodia. So what is the purpose of this visit? And um, after Cambodia, uh, are you planning like, to go to another as in member states? Yes, yeah, so throughout the year we run what we call business missions mm -hmm. to individual ASEAN member states. And they are designed to bring our members along to meet government and government agencies, get a better understanding of policy and policy direction and the investment climate. So this week we've been here in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. I think we've had 14 meetings over three days, That's including good. with the Prime Minister and various different government ministries. And it's an opportunity, as I said, particularly now here in Cambodia, with a new government to understand what their policy direction is, what their desires are from European industry, and how we can try and drive more trade and investment. Um, so we've done them throughout the year in other countries. In two weeks' time, we'll be doing it again in Thailand. But we thought now was the great opportunity to come to Cambodia, particularly with the new government in place. Right, so you mentioned you have met with uh, 14 like, stakeholders and also the Prime Minister of Overnight. So, uh, what is the outcome? Like, uh, did um, the meeting reveal a fruitful outcome? Can you share I think us? all the meetings were extremely positive, very excellent. Been very impressed with how articulate and how open all the new ministers are. Um, the policy direction is very, very clear. It's you know, it's extension of what you are doing in Cambodia before with the new Pentagon, Pentagon strategy. Um, adding some new dimensions to it, like improving on digitization as well. But the policy direction is very clear. Cambodia is open for business. It's open for investments. It wants to move in the right direction. A lot of emphasis on sustainability, on greeting the economy, but also, and this came out very clear from the meeting with the Prime Minister, want to do more to develop the human capital in Cambodia. Get our people upskilled, get our people better trained, look after them in terms of better health care as well. Look after them in terms of looking after the environment the same time. The message was very consistent from all the ministers that we met. Please come, please invest. We want good quality investment. And I think that's what European industry can do. All right, so uh, how many ministries have you met? We met, we had 14 meetings, including the Prime Minister. So yeah. the Prime Minister plus 13 ministers this week. So ministries like Ministry of Commerce, Public Works and Transport today, uh, Energy and Mines we met today as well. We've met health, we've met uh, agriculture, fisheries and, and um, forestry, we've met environment, um, more than I can remember actually off the top of my head. But we had a really good range of discussions with every single ministry and they were all at the most senior level as well. Okay, so uh, you came here particularly like, to learn about the, the regulation, also the policy, like the, in the investment policies of Cambodia and how uh, you can bring the investment opportunity to this country. Exactly, exactly that. So we came with 20, more than 20 companies this week. Our total delegation was over 70 individuals. And they were coming in from across Southeast Asia and some coming in from Europe as well. And in some cases, it was actually their first time here in, in Cambodia. But it was a great opportunity to learn about what's going on in the country, get a feel for the country, get a feel for what the government wants to achieve 
going forward in both the short, medium, and indeed long term. Um, and it will open up some companies' eyes. Now, some are already here, but they're thinking about what more can we do in the country. Some aren't here, and they're thinking about what can we do in the country? What can we come and do in terms of investment, in terms of trade, in terms of employing people? Okay, so um, for this meeting and with all of the discussion, so what do you see at the investment control in the country? Well, I think Cambodia has an awful lot of opportunity going forward. And I think the government is putting in place the right policies, the right sort of reform agenda as well. And you're strategically placed here in Southeast Asia. You're part of the regional comprehensive economic partnership, and you shouldn't play that down. That's a big thing for Cambodia. You're at the middle of a market of 650 million people. It's one of the few growth spots on the planet. And here in Cambodia, when you're achieving GDP growth north of 5% at the moment, and probably for the foreseeable future, that tells you it's a country that is worth looking at. And as infrastructure improves, as connectivity improves, with a very young workforce, good language skills, um, and I think a fast developing economy as well. Yeah. It makes it a right place to come and look at for investment, whether that's in green technology, whether it's in energy transition, whether it's in agricultural areas, whether it's in industrial areas, whether it's in digital and tech as well. They are all right here for people to come in and make those investments. All right, so with all of these sectors that you mentioned, so which sector do you think like, has the most potential for investors? Well, I would say actually, after our, we had a very, very good meeting this morning with the Minister for Mines and Energy, I think energy transition in Cambodia, where they've got some very forward looking policies, probably some of the most forward looking policies in the region, I think that's one big area. And European businesses are experts in, in this space. And then the other area, of course, is digitization. Um, so that's empowering people, it's, whether it's smartphones, internet connectivity, digital training skills, digitizing industry as well. Um, there are more traditional sectors like textiles we all know about, but agriculture too, why not? I mean, you've got a lot of farmland here, you can do a lot more with your agricultural output. Mm. So, um, potential like, come with challenges. So, during the discussion, did you um, discuss the challenges uh, for the investment here in Cambodia? And what are some of the challenges that you have seen or you are concerned about? But there are always challenges in any country when it comes to doing investments. Yeah. Understanding the local market is, of course, a key one of those. Making sure you're getting all the right permissions and permits and licenses in place. But I must say, what we're hearing from here, and we had a good meeting with the uh, Cambodian Development Commission at the beginning of our trip on, um, on Tuesday, um, everything seems to be heading in the right way. Things are being made easy for companies to come in, to get their permissions, to make those investments. The government is clearly open for business. Okay, so what do you think uh, Cambodia like should do more or improve more in order to attract to attract investors? Well, actually, if I had one criticism, I would say <laughs> the government needs to sell itself more to the rest of the world. Mm. You have great opportunity here, but not many people know about them. And I think we you know a bit more of a marketing push to let people know about the joys and opportunities that exist here in Cambodia would go an awful long way. Uh, and we will play our part in that. Part of our role at the Business Council is to raise awareness back in Europe about the potential of all of Southeast Asia. And I'm, we're more than happy to do that and work with the government to do that. And in fact, we were in discussions this week with the Cambodian Chamber of Commerce about trying to organize some events with them in um, Switzerland. I believe the Prime Minister might be going there early in the year, early in next year. And we can see what we can do there to try and help raise awareness. All right, so is Cam Cambodia pop popular for European investment? It's going to get more popular, okay. without, a, without a doubt. You're in a very competitive part of the world here. And you've got some big giants in the region like Vietnam and, and Thailand, for instance, right on your doorstep in the yes. case of Cambodia. Okay. But that doesn't mean you can't get your fair share of that pie. And investments from Europe to Southeast Asia are currently at record levels. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, with a bit of a push from Cambodia, that's a bit of a push from us to promote Cambodia as well. You can get a bigger slice of that pie. All right, so what sector in Cambodia is, is pop popular among uh, the investors from Europe? Like when they come here, like what sector that they mostly in invest in? Well, traditionally it has been areas like textile and agriculture. Textile. I think you'll see that changing over time. Well, we have members here today, this week, from, from the health sector, from the food and beverage sector, from the, from the dairy industry, mm -hmm. from automotive sector as well. 
I think infrastructure is an area as well where European businesses can play a much bigger role in Cambodia's development. Whether that's on roads or airports or railways or canal systems or power generation systems, you have a, a need for it, and I think European industry can play a big role in those areas. Okay, so Chris, thank you so much for giving us the overview of EU ABC and the potential investment in Cambodia, as well as the challenges that we have to address in order to attract more investment. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.